Holy crap. That is all metal right there. Chewed up, it's black, looks terrible. This one also looks terrible. This other part of the thrust bearing looks terrible. down to this point and uh, I didn't have this crane here um, my friend Josh was borrowing it so I didn't have it at the time first we're gonna try and get these oil pan bolts off they're 10 mil and they're actually coming off like way easier than I expected and my wrench just broke don't buy cobalt tools it just it literally just broke and yes I'm working on it with just chains if it drops I'll get it out of the way don't worry The engine lost all oil pressure whenever it happened. I, was, I had cruise control going, I was on 95, and I was going 81 miles an hour. It simultaneously lost oil pressure and started making a ton of crazy, crazy sounds. So, that's why I think it's blown. Also, don't forget to subscribe because I am uploading much more frequently lately, and we have some really cool content. 5.0 content you can't find anywhere else on the internet like a 5.0 Cummins teardown, which there is a guy who did that, but there's other stuff I've done that no one's done. Anyway, hit the subscribe button. If you like 240 content, you'd probably be disappointed because we haven't done anything with that car in like a year. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this. I may be repeating myself. If so, subscribe. So I did find uh, oil sh or metal shards in the oil, a lot of them actually, like more like, and big ones too, like pretty big. All the bolts are out. This next part is wishful thinking, thinking that this part's gonna work, but let's try some hammering. Dude, okay, so I don't think y'all get how crazy that is. That is supposed to be one of the strongest seals in like the diesel world, according to en engine rebuilders I've talked to and a few people who've commented and stuff. Like Cummins uses a crazy RTV for that. Go on like CFT, um, their YouTube, and you'll see a video of them. They have this on a big forklift and like straps holding it, and they are just hammering it away with sludge hammers for like a long time and they couldn't get it off. That was funny. I didn't even hit it hard. It just came out. I would use my impact, but this is not working. I'm just putting it around. I would use my impact, but the adapter socket for it broke in the last video. Immediately, I'm seeing some debris of just like stuff coming in there. Like obviously the rest is from the water and then there's like some leaves down in there that somehow made their way all the way through the block. Um, I'm sitting outside, but one thing I'm seeing is a lot of metal shards. Those right there, those are definitely metal shards. So let's take this off. Wow, there's a lot of metal shards in there. Holy crap. You guys see all that? Like the, that, that little, this little ridge thing caught a lot of them. Holy crap, that is a lot. I'm going to see if there's any deep in there. Holy crap, those are massive. That's metal, guys. That's not leaf debris. That's a lot of metal too. Whoa, they're like, the camera's not gonna be able to pick it up, so I'm just gonna literally pick it up for you. Holy crap. That is all metal right there. So, this engine definitely blew. I'm excited to see, like, look under that and see what we can see. Holy crap. Wow, that's like a catastrophic blowing, that much metal. There's a ton in there. I can scoop out a ton more. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna go shut my dad. Here's the plan. Usually what you would do in this situation is you would put this on the engine stand But you see the width of the engine stand is greater than the width of Where this thing goes so what I'm thinking about doing is just lowering this engine down to the ground and tipping it on its side Because it's not like I'm saving it. So who cares and then we can tear it apart there we go. This is such like a rednecky way to do this <laughs> All right. Oh, uh oh, I already see it. So whenever the cranks snap on these, the thing that they do where they blew on the crank because they get so hot. So it has something to do with the wiring harness. I think something to do with like the wiring harness being frayed, um, causing the injectors in the rear to send, to the two rear injectors to send way more fuel than they should, upping all the pressure and all that and blueing the crank. The reason it does that metal whenever it gets super, super hot is blue, but 
you had to get really hot to get blue. Which means we have a snap crankshaft. Yippee! <laughs> That's crazy. Um, I wasn't expecting that, but because I could still turn the engine over a bit. This engine has claimed two sockets now. So I'm about to go to the store. Man, man, I never sit in this thing. You guys are wondering an update on the 240. Nothing. Oh yeah, I'm about to go to the store, but I'm wondering something. Now I'm wondering why the engine blew, because when the crank snaps, that's usually the wiring harness, and it's that issue with the injector sticking. But my turbo had a lot of oil, and I mean a lot. So maybe my turbo didn't do it, and my turbo happened to be really, really close to causing an issue. Or maybe they were one and the same, the issue. Probably no way to actually know. Either way, I want to get my turbo rebuilt. I got a quote from a shop about an hour away that can rebuild the turbo for like 1100 bucks, which is pretty, pretty great. And they'll put in the wicked wheels. So my turbo will sound super, super cool. The truck, we have no clue what it'll sound like because there's no videos online of wicked wheels. So I'm excited for that. So we're going to hear what that thing sounds like. Um, and I think I'm going to go with that route because I thought about doing a whole custom turbo setup, but I want my truck back quicker than later. Sooner than, sooner than later. <laughs> Said that wrong. Sooner than later. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with that option, but we'll see what happens. So next like two weeks probably, that'll happen. So with all those bolts loose, we should be able to pull the main caps off. Oh, they're kinda hot. That took so much force to get them off. That's why this engine is so hard to rebuild. It's just like the amount of stuff. I don't think I have the equipment to rebuild with one of these. It's another reason why I'm not gonna rebuild it. The cost and just equipment, and that bolt's really oily. Got one. Oh, yep, spun bearing also. I think, yeah, you guys see all that heat and stuff and how shredded it is? That bearing's in bad condition. Camera's about to die, so all I'm gonna do is get the main caps off. You guys saw me get one off, and then I'm gonna unbolt the piston rods. I'll do one real quick, unbolting the piston rods so you guys can see it, and then I'll let it charge. And that stuff, you know, it's just repeated stuff. And then after that, I won't do anything else without filming it, but. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get these off. What is that, like a, I'm gonna guess like a 12. Let's see what one of the rod bearings looks like. Okay. Hopefully I can do this before the camera dies. So this rod bearing looks really good. Um, some discoloration, that could just be from the water. But that rod bearing looks good. I'm sure we'll find other rod bearings that don't look good. So whenever, <coughs> Yeah, random cough. I'm gonna go charge the camera. When I come back, all the rods will look like this, and all these main caps will be off. It might take some time, especially if these are kind of welded on from all the heat. So check this out. The rod bearings, so there's one inside there, looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look brand, brand new, because of some water stains and stuff. Here's another one. You see, they all look pretty good. Well, that one's burnt. That one doesn't look great. Then, that's a main cap bearing. That one's missing the bearing. <laughs> Rod bearings, you see they all, my point is is that they all look better than you'd think they would. We get to the main cap bearings. See that one, it has some green color to it. It has, um, it has a ton of damage, some chipping right there. You guys can see the metal's gone there. Then this one, the thrust bearing. This is part of the thrust bearing. Thrust bearing controls forward and aft movement of the crankshaft. It's chewed up black looks terrible this one also looks terrible this other part of the thrust bearing looks terrible remember these are supposed to look like pretty this one real bad there's the main caps that they go in you guys can see damage on the crankshaft um, I only have one bolt from one piston rod in so I need to try to get that out so I can't really spin the crankshaft right now it's just not letting me because some of the pistons are hitting it getting this bolt off I'm wondering if the crank's gonna come out in two pieces or if it's really just a damage crank and not a snap. All right, I got it off. Let's pull this crank out. I wanna pull it out like this so I can, there you guys. There we go, it's one piece for now. That's kind of crazy that it's taking one piece. You guys can see a lot of bluing on there and just a lot of bearing damage. Can't really get that bearing off. Oh man, this crank is bad. I, I doubt this crank could even run the stock sizing. Like if you were to rebuild this crank, I bet you'd have to shave down and do different sizes and all that, so I don't think that this crank will ever be able to be reused in any application. There's metal shavings inside the bearing. Holy crap, that is so much damage. The bluing alone will tell you that that's 
a lot of damage. Crankshaft's honestly in better condition than I thought. Like it's not snapped, I mean. I don't see any major cracks either. I see marks, I don't see cracks. It's kind of weird. Now, as we are to get the pistons out, once we get those out, this thing will be primarily stripped down. Oh, there's a piece of something floating around. Oh, that's the thrust bearing piece. See, here's the other one. Okay, so that keeps the thrust, the crankshaft from going forward and aft. This bearing is bad too. This bearing is bad too. Gosh, so much damage. Why does this one look so good? Well, it's an, it's an exterior bearing, so that's probably why. Yeah, because this other exterior bearing, it's got some damage, but it doesn't look that bad. Do I know what these things are? These things right here? No. I'm gonna pull these little things out. A more cleaned up view of everything, as long as you don't look over there, over there, over there. The torn down block, a lot, a lot smaller when it's like this. If you get it down to what it is, it's not that big of a deal. I can actually pick it up a bit. You can see like, it's heavy. I think I will make a table out of this. We'll see, I'm not gonna do it now because it would be kind of silly to invest money in a table <laughs> whenever. Uh, I had the situation with the Titan going on of getting it running, which we're not far off from at all. I had a subscriber give me a Mishimoto intercooler for that, so I think that's pretty cool. That intercooler has too much oil in it, and I don't want to mess with that. Thank God he gave me a new one. Uh, thanks, by the way, if you're watching. Got to get the turbo rebuilt, and got to get that new intercooler in, and then um, new transmission oil pan gasket. And then we got to work on the wiring harness to make sure that this doesn't happen again if it was the wiring harness that caused it. Um, I don't know exactly what caused it because the crankshaft is blue and crankshaft being blue is not right. So especially if it's blue there, you see like that part's not blue. It's actually a little bit blued, but not much. That's really blued. Um, I don't know if blued is a word, but um, anyway, so that makes me think that you know, it was the wiring harness thing, but there was a ton of oil in the intercooler, which makes me think the turbo is going out. So the turbo is going to get rebuilt no matter what. It's out, may as well do it. And I want to put those wicked wheels in. So I'm going to have a shop rebuild it because there are some things that are past my realm of being able to do. Um, anyway, and they gave me a good price. Anyway, then we have all eight pistons here. Um, I don't know, honestly, what to say about these. Uh, I'm just going to throw them away. You know, they're, they're ruined by rust and I hit on them and I got a socket stuck in that one. So that's something. Um, I never got the fuel, uh, the high pressure fuel pump off. I will do that. You can see it's actually broken from hitting it too much, but um, you know, I just need to get that socket and pull it off and pull it out. If you guys remember this engine, the new engine didn't come with a clutch fan. Um, it came with the clutch fan base, but it didn't come with the clutch fan itself. So I was like, okay, I'll reuse my clutch fan, which is right here. So this was not separated in the last video um, because I didn't have the right socket to do it. So let me show you how Calvin did it, the guy who's dating my sister. Um, let me show you how he did. All right, Kevin, since you don't have a big enough wrench, and I don't either, actually, to get your fan clutch nut loose, we're gonna use the next best thing. Actually, this is better than the wrench, if you ask me. The vibration will take it right loose. Um, what else? Yeah, no updates on the S14 and Titan video coming soon. I guess that's it.